COVID experiences a memoir from Kashmir early march 2020 spring had just been around the snow had softened and the sunshine was brighter the announcement of the pandemic from china followed by italy and the united states was heartbreaking from the small living room warmed by hammam and layered with wooden paneling our family watched this news on tv we saw how people in wuhan were dying and how china was combating in a spirited manner only china can build a hospital in a fortnight father exclaimed had the pandemic hit our country it would have been a disaster grandfather added at this juncture we had not imagined that the pandemic would one day invade us too may allah keep the plague away from our land mother raised hands the world's most developed nations like the us and italy whose healthcare systems are considered the best were affected by covid-19 brutally back home in the blood soaked streets of the valley of kashmir the pandemic received a mixed response while some were serious others were callous ours is a land of saints it won't come here people concluded any discourse on the virus but soon trends took a terrifying turn in the third week of march a lady who had a recent travel history was declared positive so the first case was reported from pirwar land of saints the administration ordered a complete shutdown first covid-19 death took place in the following week the experiences during the lockdown were one of a kind for everyone In the initial days of the lockdown bankers were left high and dry as per the official orders banking was included in the list of essential services their id cards were supposed to be considered as movement passes but on the road a banker was left to the mood and mercy of the policeman on duty the first such incident flashes across my memory lane When the authorities imposed restrictions over the inter-district movement of people, long lines of halted four-wheelers at a crossroad on the outskirts of the city hinted towards the beginning of a clampdown. After our long braking and clutching, I finally reached the scene. The police had raised drums and barricades. A cop approached and asked, "Where are you going?" I humbly replied, "Home." The cop turned away his face and said, "You're not allowed." I got down from my car to make a request. "I am a banker. This is my ID card." He turned a deaf ear. "I was on duty," I continued, "and now I am going home." Upon this, the cop pointed towards his superior. I made the same request to the officer, showed him the ID card, and explained that I was on duty and had to go home. In the meanwhile a few other people joined in begging the inspector to let them move another banker a couple of doctors and a few people employed in the essential services finally the inspector shouted to his subordinates let all the doctors and bankers move check id cards after a few days another official order was out only minimal staff to attend the duties others to work from home but once again if any category was still confused it was banking one day a colleague was stopped by the police in the outskirts of the city before he could explain a policeman snatched his car keys and ran away in a police somo the banker was left in such a problematic situation that was hard to explain by the time we could contact our regional office and take up the matter with the police department it was already 10:30 a.m. Finally the banker left his car unlocked and unattended in the middle of highway and began his journey towards the office on foot It was not before the afternoon that the official communication from the bank to the government and the government to the police reached the concerned police station and the colleague's car keys were released Attending office a bank was another nightmare while every non-essential office was shut banks were open bankers were exposed to grave threats people were advised by the government to visit banks in extreme urgency some facilities like loaning and passbook printing were stopped temporarily people however still visited the bank in large numbers our colleagues dealing with cash and those attending the front desks were at risk 
I recall one of my colleague Fahim's precautionary measures. He was dealing with cash, notes of all sorts, clean, soiled, mutilated, dirty, dusty and deformed. He got a PPE kit to protect himself. While entering and leaving the office, he used to straddle so that he did not touch anything in the approach corridor. The whole thing was laughable. Thanks to our bank which gifted us a thousand bucks for buying sanitizers and masks and later on paid some money as an incentive for working during the pandemic. Well, money is always welcome, but no money can compensate for the risk and the mental threat that the plague had caused. Back home, mother was tense. I and my brother had to go to toil every day while mother, whom we call Jaji, was so much worried that she used to say thayo ye nokri to bhi ho gayi zoo khot chun ki resign and sit back nothing is about life she has eternally been concerned about us she could neglect the whole world for her sons she has faced tremendous sufferings for us this has made her extremely possessive on the other hand father encouraged us duty takes precedence he said firmly every day just be careful he continued and follow the standard operating procedures this personified the truth of life a mother is the quintessence of unwavering and irrevocable love and care a father is a figure that teaches how to exist and how to confront the complications out there when i used to leave in the morning jaji would gaze at me with moist eyes and a wrinkled face fear and panic were evident on her old face which i have watched grow and wrinkle over the years while i walked away she would raise her shaky hands and pray allah protect my son from every plague keep him in your watch wherever he walks keep him away from the germ i owe myself and whoever i am today to my mother after some days another episode struck our family Since childhood I was deeply connected with my maternal grandmother for more than 10 years I have lived with her she was a chaste pious person she would wake up early and spend her day worshiping and chanting the verses of the holy quran she was beautiful and fair her eyes were brown and her skin was glowing even in her 90s during the peak pandemic time she took her last breath it was a non covid death The day she passed away I saw a dream which foreshadowed her death I wonder who puts this in dreams that day hurt she was one of the dearest ladies in my life that morning while eating breakfast the phone rang it was brother granny has passed away he spoke in sorrow at that moment I broke down that food fell out of my mouth later on I kissed her on the forehead and bade her a last goodbye outside i witnessed a mixed response my neighborhood is a semi typical rural cluster it's a short drive from the city in the neighborhood there's a shop on the other side of a small stream a group of people of different ages casting the standards of containment to wind gusts sat here and discussed this cabinet comprised two old men wearing white cone shaped caps typical to elderly kashmiri villagers a retired officer and the shopkeeper they seemed like the happiest folks on the earth whenever i drove around the corner i found them chuckling and cackling they enjoyed every moment one day i overheard one of them you chuni kehin ye chachal there is no virus it's a game plan at this time millions of people had lost their lives to the pandemic and trillions of positive cases were confirmed across the globe but they did not have a blink of worry on their faces in the second half of the year 2020 gradually the first wave of the pestilence eased consequently life came near to normal towards the end of the year phased unlocks were announced businesses and educational institutes were opened transfers took place The year 2021 was welcomed with new hopes and a new beginning. However, human hopes did not last long. The germ knocked at the door again and this time deadlier. 
In the second week of April 2021, I traveled to Srinagar from Amritsar due to a non-COVID medical emergency at home. I spent a couple of days at a hospital in Srinagar. The next day, on April 14, I fell squeamish with cough, body ache, throat infection and weakness. On the rainy morning of April 17, I tested positive. Hastily, the doctors prescribed a few pills with paracetamol, azithromycin, vitamin C and zinc. Cough syrup for the cough and a multivitamin for the weakness were also specified. Additionally, I was advised to go for strict seclusion of 14 days. The physician also said, take nutritious diet, eat well, drink plenty of warm fluids and above all, do not panic. I reached home, latched myself up in my room and began doing as told. Although I was sick with symptoms and maladies, yet it was creamy until now. But shortly, my condition exacerbated. On the second day of the quarantine, which was the fourth day of my illness, I experienced unusual health circumstances. First of all, I underwent sudden vertigo. My head started swimming. It was a frightening dizziness that lingered on for over an hour and repeated itself in a matter of hours. It made me anxious. I called my family members and some friends from the medical fraternity. Although my family members could not come physically near me, they encouraged me through this. On the other side, the doctors said, these are moderate symptoms being observed in COVID patients and there is no need to worry. The doctors insisted upon monitoring some vitals, body temperature, oxygen saturation, pulse and blood pressure. As long as your oxygen levels are above 92, you need not worry, the doctors added. I used to inspect my oxygen saturation every now and then. Thank God it remained well above 92 throughout. Don't think about it too much and keep your head up, physicians and family members continue to encourage. It's worth mentioning here that this virus takes a heavy toll on your mental well-being. And if you are affected with indications like the ones I had, it becomes very odd to be mentally strong. Any trivial condition leads to the belief that it may be caused by the virus. It was psychologically depressed. The following three days were dreadful. In addition to the frequent and repeating vertigos, new complaints developed. These days were marked with the occurrence of on and off floods of fever, sweating, loss of capability to focus and extreme perturbation. During these troubling moments, based on the suggestions I received, I tried to read books and write, but all this was for nothing. I couldn't focus. I tried watching the famous Turkish series Erturo, but I couldn't focus and relax. I couldn't enjoy reading, writing or screen time. There is no end to the story. In addition to these symptoms, in another couple of days, the virus affected my taste, smell and oral normality. Although my taste and smell did not completely vanish, now I could sense that it, was, it has weakened to a substantial level. Now I had no appetite. All the tasty delicacies seemed like munching grass. I would keep on chewing a mouthful of rice and meat. I was not able to detect the taste. I couldn't figure out when to swallow the chewed food. Sometimes I threw the chewed up morsel of food in confusion. Likewise, my mouth dried up. There was a strange sensation of lifelessness in the frontal area of the tongue. Meanwhile, I tried every air freshener and chamber vaporizer to inspect my olfactory strength. It was also badly affected. Drastic body weakness combined with shivering hands, knees and feet were the order of the day. I couldn't cut my fingernails with a clipper. The ailment was uncommon. It was for the first time that I had experienced such sickness. I have never in my life felt so disturbingly ill. It was terrible. It was distinct from any common disorder. Based on this experience, I am now certain that this viral pandemic was not fake. It's not a conspiracy. It exists. Until one does not contract the condition, this can look like a plot. But once it happens, it's offensive emotionally scandalous and sinister. With that in mind, I would like to suggest that the pandemic be treated seriously. 
The denial squad needs to be informed of its existence. The standard operating procedures must be followed in letter and spirit. That is the only way this can be deterred. My illness entirely altered my perspective towards the pestilence. Now, I am confident in suggesting measures. At the same time, please ensure to spread wisdom and assistance. Whatever you know about the disease, you must spread it to the others. Helpline numbers, emergency supply of oxygen and medicine, telephonic support, etc. must be kept convenient in case of any emergency. I would also emphasize the importance of mental and psychological support that a sufferer requires. It matters as much as medicine and maintenance. There is nothing more harmful to the general well-being of a COVID-19 patient than mental morosity. Support such patients psychologically. Encourage them. Pacify them. Tell them that they are well and that they are going to recover. Console them. Give them courage and confidence that they would battle and triumph over. This is of paramount importance. At the same time, we should avoid over-information about the pandemic. Do not just read everything about it. Do not waste so much. Do not watch so much newscasts that nothing except the fear of the scourge persists in your psyche. Take some time away from Corona and WhatsApp. Avoid COVID screen time. This is for the healthy readers in general and COVID patients in particular. During my days of the ailment, I ceased watching the news and as soon as I read the word COVID on my phone, I pressed the retreat button. Watch out and don't be pernickety. The struggle is on. Countless people are struggling between life and death. Many have recovered. Someday in future, when man reads history, these years are likely to be remembered as the years of the COVID-19. It affected all. No country was spared. Businesses were shut. Economies slumped. Education ceased. Jobs were clipped. Although some people have been indirectly affected by the plague, others have experienced the trauma of being positive. Others succumbed to the germ. Positive has been the most dreadful word. Man has seen a lot. Floods, pandemics, scourges and what not. But man has always fought. These are tough times. Hopefully, the days of happiness will return. When all is said and done, life is a crusade and we must keep up the battle.